3.4, we're going to solve systems of equations in three variables. Now let me give you a bit of a warning here. If your definition of a hard problem is one that takes a lot of paper, then these are the hardest problems we'll ever do in this class. They're very long problems, but they're not that bad. In fact, everything that we're going to be doing today is stuff that we've already done. It just takes a lot of precision and a lot of writing sometimes. Let's dive right in. Three equations means that we have a 3D graph. An equation with x, y, and z is going to be a line that has length, width, and height. And as you can see in these pictures, we could have three planes that meet at one point. That would be one solution. Could be three planes that all intersect and make a straight line. That would be infinite solutions. And that would be the kind of situation where you get to a point in the problem where you see something like zero equals zero. And then there's all sorts of ways where you could have three planes that don't intersect anywhere, where all three touch at the same place. That would be something like if you get to a point where you see zero equals five or zero equals 29, something like that. So one solution, many solutions, or no solutions. Those ideas should all be familiar. Now we're just doing it with three variables. And the process is exactly like elimination that we saw with two variables. Step one says get rid of x, y, or z. Step two says with your two letters that are left, solve for them. And step three says go back to the original equation and figure out your missing piece. Let's take a look at what that means in a problem. We've got x, y's, and z's, and we want to eliminate. Look at my x's, 4, 2, and 6. The smallest number that they all go into is 12. 2, 3, and 1, the smallest number they all go into is 6. 3, 5, and 4, the smallest number all of them go into is 60, it looks like. So it looks like the easiest letter to get rid of is going to be the y. So let's see what that looks like. I actually choose two equations. I want to get rid of the y in equation 1 and equation 2 first. So if I'm going to make that 6 and negative 6, I have to go 3 times this and 2 times this one. Let's see what that After all that elimination, I get a new equation, 16x plus 19z equals negative 25. I'm going to call that equation 4. Now I've got to go through the same process and get rid of y one more time. Go back and erase the stuff I put next to equations 1 and 2. Now I can look at either equation 1 and 3 or equation 2 and 3. I just have to choose two new equations. I can't use 1 and 2 together again and get rid of y one more time. So I'll use equation 2 and 3. Looks like 2 and 3 together make 3 as my, comp, my best choice. So I'll maybe say multiply this whole thing by 1. This whole thing by negative 3. That should cancel out the y's. Let's see what we get. We have to cancel out the y's because we canceled out the y's to get equation 4. We have to get rid of the same letter twice. After going through the elimination step, I have a new equation. I'll call it equation 5. And it doesn't have a y. Now take a close look at equation 4 and 5. We're going to try to put them together. I'll just move equation 5 over to the left for now. And I'm going to use elimination again. Unfortunately, the numbers aren't pretty. The smallest number that I see that 16 and 7 can go into is 133. I'm sorry, 112. The smallest number that 19 and 7 go into is 133. So neither of those are ideal, but I'll go ahead and get rid of the x's by multiplying equation 4 by 7 and equation 5 by 16. I'll come up with two new equations, and hopefully the x's will cancel out nicely. I go through my process, and I got z equals negative 16.714. And I know that's not the right answer. I know that because I can see the right answer. And it's not this. I'm going to keep this in the video so that you see that making a mistake on these can cause a lot of problems. I'm going to go back and look for my mistake. 
Maybe you can find it yourself before I say what it is. I must have made a mistake on one of my equations. Negative 3 times 6 is not negative 9. So what I'm going to do now is use a new color. I'll use purple. I'm going to fix everything that I have to fix. I'm going to erase the parts that were wrong, which would be this whole piece and everything from here down. I'm going to put correct steps in. Maybe try them on your own. This worked out much more beautifully. If you haven't noticed yet, it's going to be a lot nicer to cancel out something in equation 4 and 5 than originally I thought. 16 and negative 16 cancel out without any work whatsoever. 19 and negative 7 make 12z. Negative 25 and negative 11 makes negative 36. Z equals negative 3. Much more beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and say that I made that mistake on purpose just to illustrate how important it is to be careful, but you probably shouldn't believe me when I say that. Once we know z, we can go back to equation 4 or 5 to figure out x. 16x plus 19z equals negative 25. Using some simple algebra steps, we can solve for x. Once I've got x, I'm still not done. I'm missing y. I have to go all the way back to the beginning to equation 1, 2, or 3 to figure out y. 6 times x minus y plus 4z equals negative 1. Again, we go through some simple algebra steps, and we'll get y, and then we'll almost be done. The only thing that's left at this point is to put them as an ordered triplet. We don't call it an ordered pair because there's three numbers. x, comma, y, comma, z. And then we're done. Like I said, these problems require a lot of work, and one little mistake can cost you big time. Example 2 says we're going to solve a three-variable system with no solution. The fact that it tells us that there's no solution is a big hint. We know we should come up with something like 0 equals 5 or something like that. First, I'm going to decide what variable I want to get rid of using my quick check. 12 is the smallest number I see here that we can use. Actually, the smallest number I can use there would be 4. So I could use equation 1 and 2 at first, then equation 1 and 3. So the biggest number I would need is 4. The biggest number I'd need is 4 using y's. And z is the biggest number I would need is 4. So there's no best choice here. You can use anything you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and multiply equation 1 by negative 4 and try to cancel it with equation 2 and see what happens. Notice everything on the left cancels out, but on the right I end up with negative 5. 0 does not equal negative 5, so no matter what else happens, there's no solution to this problem. And that's a good thing, because it means you get to stop. Next example, we're going to solve a three-variable system with many solutions. That means somewhere along the line, we're probably going to come up with 0 equals 0. The only reason I know that is because I'm told that it has many solutions. So let's look. Smallest number I can use for x's is 3. Smallest number I can use for y's is 3. Smallest number I can use for z's is 1. So I'm going to go with 1. The first maybe I cancel out the z's using equation 1 and 2. Don't even have to multiply by anything. I'll call that first equation equation 4, my first new equation. Next, i got to get rid of the z's again. Switch colors. Maybe combine 2 and 3. That way I don't have to multiply by anything again. Let's see what happens when I put these deep. I'll call this equation 5. And I'm going to move equation 5 a little bit to the left. That doesn't want me to. I'm going to rewrite equation 5. Looking at equation 4 and 5 together, it looks like I can get rid of x or y. Get a negative 4 up top. I'll multiply this whole thing by negative 2. Get negative 4x minus 4y equals negative 16. And I get 0 equals 0. As soon as that happens, 
I celebrate because I get to stop. I get to say many solutions. Just want to point out right now while it's on my mind, those of you who continue on through the rest of this chapter with some of the optional material, you're going to learn how to do these same types of problems in a graphing calculator and they will take a fraction of the time. Probably five times faster. Right now you can pause the video and try these on your own or you can continue on with the lesson. Word problem. This is one word problem that I'm probably willing to say is scary because it takes something that everyone hates, a word problem, and combines it with some of the longest problems you'll ever do in this class. But we will persevere. Go ahead and pause the video and try to figure out what's going on. Then we'll talk about defining some variables and writing some equations. Looks like we need to find out how many of each type of ad we're going to run. So that's going to be mixed up with television ads, radio ads, and newspaper ads. So we've got to define variables for all three of those. Once we've defined our variables, we need to come up with three equations. The free clue that we need three equations is that there's three variables. Anytime you have three variables, you need three equations. If you have two variables, you need two equations, and so on. So it looks like we have a total of 60 ads. So if we take the TV ads plus the radio ads plus the newspaper ads all together, we add up to 60 ads. Another equation we could make is we know we have as many radio ads as television and newspaper combined. So if we have as many radio ads, that's Y, is the same as TV and newspaper combined. So that's our second equation. Our third equation can deal with the cost. Television is a thousand, so we say a thousand times the number of radio, or a thousand times the number of television, plus two hundred dollars times the number of radio ads, plus five hundred dollars times the number of newspaper ads, all together add up to $30,000, our total budget. Now, we could use elimination. To use elimination, we'd have to do a little work here. We don't want Y by itself. But let's use something different than elimination. Since we do have Y by itself, let's use some substitution. Let's take this X plus Z and substitute it into equation 1. And I'll call this other one equation 2. What that's going to do is it's going to get rid of the y completely, and we'll have just x and z's, which is easier to solve when we have two variables. Let's see what our new equations look like when we do that. Once I come up with my two new equations, I notice my second equation has a lot of zeros on the end of every number. So I'm going to divide everything by 100 to make the number smaller. Not a whole lot smaller, especially on the last one. But overall, a lot easier to deal with. I can call those equations 3 and 4. I've got to put 3 and 4 together to solve for x and z, which we know how to do at this point. Once we know x and z, we can go through and figure out what, what y was. And eventually we'll have all three. I'm not going to put all the steps. I recommend you try them on your own. But eventually you'll get your three numbers. And what those numbers represent, 18 television ads, 30 radio ads, and 12 newspaper ads. That's about as hard as these problems can get. And again, when I say hard, I really mean that's as long as they can get. These are, these are big problems. At this point, you can pause and try this on your own, or you can do these later. Other than that, we are done with this lesson.